O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Praise to you, O Christ. Alleluia. Blessed be God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. O God, let us worship Him. Psalm 91. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. For he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his pinions and under his wings you will find refuge his faithfulness is a shield and buckler. You will not fear the terror of the night, nor the arrows that fly by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in darkness, nor the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only look with your eyes and see the recompense of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord your dwelling place, the Most High, who is my refuge, no evil shall be allowed to befall you, no plague come near your tent. For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. On their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against a stone. You will tread on the lion and the adder, the young lion and the serpent you will trample underfoot. Because he holds fast to me in love, I will deliver him. I will protect him because he knows my name. When he calls to me, I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will rescue him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Daniel chapter 10. And behold, a hand touched me and set me trembling on my hands and knees. And he said to me, O Daniel, man greatly loved, understand the words that I speak to you and stand upright, 
for now I have been sent to you. And when he had spoken this word to me, I stood up trembling. Then he said to me, Fear not, Daniel, for from the first day that you set your heart to understand and humbled yourself before your God, your words have been heard, and I have come because of your words. The prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me twenty-one days, but Michael, one of the chief pr princes, came to help me, for I was left there with the kings of Persia, and came to make you understand what is to happen to your people in the latter days. For the vision is for days yet to come. At that time shall arise Michael, the great prince who has charge of your people. And there shall be a time of trouble, such as never has been since there was a nation till that time. But at that time your people shall be delivered, everyone whose name shall be found written in the book. And many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. And those who are wise shall shine like the brightness of the sky above, and those who turn many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. Revelation chapter 12. Now war arose in heaven. Michael and his angels fighting against the dragon. And the dragon and his angels fought back. But he was defeated, and there was no longer any place for them in heaven. And the great dragon was thrown down, that ancient serpent, who was called the devil and Satan, the deceiver of the whole world. He was thrown down to earth, and his angels were thrown down with him. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, now the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ have come. For the accuser of our brothers has been thrown down, who accuses them day and night before our God. And they have conquered him by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. For they loved not their lives even unto death. Therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them. But woe to you, O earth and sea, for the devil has come down to you in great wrath, because he knows that his time is short. A reading from Matthew chapter 18. At that time the disciples came to Jesus, saying, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And calling to him a child, he put him in the midst of them and said, Truly I say to you, unless you turn and become like children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Whoever humbles himself like this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Whoever receives one such child in my name receives me. But whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, it would be better for him to have a great millstone fastened around his neck and to be drowned in the depth of the sea. Woe to the world for temptations to sin. For it is necessary that temptations come, but woe to the one by whom the temptations come. And if your hand or your foot causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to enter life crippled or lame than with two hands or two feet to be thrown into the eternal fire. And if your eye causes you to sin, tear it out and throw it away. It is better for you to enter life with one eye than with two eyes to be thrown into the hell of fire. See that you do not despise one of these little ones. For I tell you, that in heaven their angels always see the face of my Father who is in heaven. For the Son of Man came to save the lost.
Grace, peace, and mercy be yours this day from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Things look bad. Your religion is shrinking. People are getting used to the culture around them, and they're adapting to it. Your children are being educated by those who do not believe as you do. Folks don't know their Bible much more, and they live by it even less. It's all slipping away. Things look bad. Daniel saw this also, and it led him to fast and to pray. You might remember Daniel's story, or at least part of it. He did not have an easy life. The Babylonians had conquered Judah in war. The part of the old nation still named Israel after the split of north and south had been wiped out 150 years before this. But the Babylonians came in and finished the job. And most people were hauled off as prisoners of war. Now, Daniel was a smart young man, and so he was put into a re-education program to educate him in the ways of the Babylonians so that he would be useful to them. And he was. He excelled which caused the natives, who weren't as smart or as able as him, to be jealous of him. And so they plotted against him and got him thrown into the lion's den. That's the part of the story that most of us remember. God saved him from the mouth of the lions. But it hadn't gotten much better after that. In fact, it seemed as if things got worse. So as Daniel did when he was taken to Babylon, as he did when all of those natives plotted against him, and as he did even while he was in the lion's den, so now when things looked even more grim, he prayed. He fasted and prayed. For 21 days. And scripture says from that very first day his prayers were heard. But there was a delay in the answer caused by the prince of the kingdom of Persia, not a man prince, but the one who held the kingdom under his princely demonic power, Satan. For 21 days, Satan beat up on Daniel, trying to convince him that his fasting and his prayer were a waste of time. For 21 days, his chief de- this chief demon lied and deceived and twisted words and tried to convince Daniel to just give up. But at the end of the 21 days, the time allotted was up. And Michael, the chief prince, the chief angel, was unleashed to fight for Daniel. And Daniel was given relief. Michael fought off Satan, and then the word of God spoke to Daniel and comforted him. But the word's message doesn't sound very good at first. Yes, things are bleak, but things are going to get worse. There shall be a time of trouble, he says, such as never has been since there was a nation till that time. But, but at that time, when things look their absolute worst at their lowest point, Your people shall be delivered. Everyone whose name shall be found written in the book. Or in other words, this sinful world and its prince will rage, but only for a time. They will not win. 
God's people shall be delivered, shall fact. The outcome is not in doubt. And so it came to pass. God's people were permitted to leave Persia and go back. God had decreed their discipline of captivity over for 70 years, and they stayed not a day less. And while it looked bleak and hopeless at times, the outcome was never a doubt, at least not to God. The God who speaks, and it happens. The God who orders his angels to act and fight, and they do. God knew the outcome. But the fulfillment of these words to Daniel didn't happen for another several hundred years. When the Word of God did not just come and speak to Daniel, but when the Word of God became flesh, when Jesus was born, when the Son of God in human flesh came to fight for you, like Daniel, he too fasted and prayed. Remember that? But for Jesus, it was not 21 days. It was 40 days and 40 nights in the wilderness, being tempted and tormented by the same demonic prince that hounded Daniel. But for Jesus, no angel intervened. This was Jesus' fight. Angels came and ministered to him afterward, but not during the fight. And Satan knew it. He tried to destroy Jesus with death at his birth. He tried to destroy him with sin in the wilderness. He tried to destroy him with doubt on the cross. But he was never able to. The word of God made flesh for us, Jesus, one. He didn't lose when he died, but he used his death to conquer death and to conquer sin and Satan also. His resurrection, now our resurrection. His life, our life. And our freedom from the chains of the devil. But Revelation tells us that that's not the end of the story. There's more and bigger. The full and final fulfillment of those words is still to come when Jesus comes again in glory. Until then, we heard the demonic prince is going to try to fight here because he's been thrown down to earth. Or in other words, we weren't thrown to the lions like Daniel, but the lions were actually thrown down to us. And he's going to fight against you, like he did with Daniel, trying to devour you with sin, with death, with doubt. But like with Daniel, God sends his angels to fight for you. You may never ever see them. You might not ever know them. I don't know if Daniel knew during those 21 days what was going on. Only after was it revealed to him. But you have been told. God's word has made it clear so that you expect it and not be surprised because you are a target. Because you have been baptized, you are marked with the name of this demon's enemy, Jesus the Christ. So when Satan sees you, he sees Jesus. When Satan sees you, he sees with rage and hatred. So he attacks. How? It's different.
for each one of us. But for each one of us, the goal is the same, to get us to walk away from our Savior. Getting the culture around us, as in the time of Daniel, to educate us and to seduce us into thinking that the danger isn't that great and that we let our guard down. Getting us thinking the Word of God may be not so true, that the pleasures and priorities and the opinions of this world are good, even if the Word of God says that they are not. Into thinking, what's the harm? And it looks bad, doesn't it? As it did in Daniel's day. Things aren't getting better. And they sure seem to be picking up speed. It would be worse yet if God's angels were not fighting for you. But they are. You may not ever see them. You may not ever know them. And I'm sure they're doing more fighting and protecting than we could ever imagine. And it doesn't matter who you are as a Christian, how old you are, how strong you are, how small you are, you are in the devil's crosshairs for a time. But when the days are up, the days that have been decreed, like with Daniel, the word of God will come to us, and as we pray, deliver us from evil. He already is delivering us for sure. The angels are fighting for you, protecting you. But this too, the blood of the Lamb and the word of His testimony, they are delivering you at this very moment, giving you the Holy Spirit, giving you the forgiveness of your sins, and giving you the strength that you need. You shall be delivered. There are no maybes or ifs, because this is God's promise. You are baptized. You are forgiven. This is my body. This is my blood. This is the word of the Lord. Sure, certain, powerful. Things may look bleak, but the word of God is our light in the darkness, our confidence in the face of doubt, in our anchor, in the midst of the storm. Because of these gifts of God and His angels fighting for you, nothing can harm you. Really, nothing. You might be hated, You might be thrown into the lion's den. You might be persecuted. And you will have Satan at you. But the victory of Jesus Christ is already yours. Nothing will overcome you. Not even if you die or when you die. Because you will rise to life with Jesus. Satan, your accuser, will not have the last word. Jesus' forgiveness will. And with that forgiveness, you have everything. Life now and life forever. Jesus promised, and so it is. So if you look around our world today, it looks a lot like it was in the day of Daniel. Things are slipping away. The world is on the wrong trajectory. And things are picking up speed. And it would be quite easy to lose hope. But don't. We need to remember that there is more going on than meets the eye. That God's holy angels are fighting for us. 
And that while there may be a time when the attack is fierce and brutal and long and all seems lost, it's not. It was not for Daniel, and it's not for us. Because Jesus, the promised one, has come and is coming again with his angels in full victory. Amen. The peace of God that passes all human understanding. Keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord until life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, hear my prayer, and let my cry come to you. Make us to know your ways, O Lord, that we may walk in the path of salvation made known to us in your word. Hear our complaints and quiet them by your merciful deliverance, that we may respond with trust and thanksgiving. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Encourage us, O Lord, by your Holy Spirit, that we may not lose heart, but being of one mind and one will, may serve you with gladness, doing the works of your kingdom, and speaking your word of witness throughout the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Shine your light upon us, O Lord, that we may do what is good and right and live as faithful citizens in our nation. Bless our president, our governor, and all those elected and appointed to make, administer, and judge our laws. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Show us your compassion, O Lord, and in your mercy grant healing, comfort, and peace to all who suffer. Deliver them from all their afflictions, pain, sorrow, and fear. We especially pray for all those that we name in our hearts before you at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Unite us, O Lord, that we may be one mind and one will in doctrine, witness, and service. Bless us as we come at your bidding to receive the body and blood of your Son at his table. Grant that what we receive in this Holy Communion, we may keep in holy hearts and holy lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Grant to us all good things needful for this body and life and profitable for our salvation. And keep from us all things harmful that sustained in time of want and guarded in time of prosperity, we may endure to the day of our Lord's coming and be judged worthy of eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Everlasting God, you have ordained and constituted the service of angels and men in a wonderful order. Mercifully grant that as your holy angels always serve and worship you in heaven, so by your appointment they may also help and defend us here on earth. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, you have safely brought us to the beginning of this day. Defend us in the same with your mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings, being ordered by your governance, may be righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.